Job Talk Tech Tips are brought to you by SNS. Proven performance for the power sports industry. Okay, we're back in the Grease and Gears garage for another installment of this old FXR, the uh, Dennis Kirk Evolution, FXR Evolution giveaway. Um, last time we left off with, we were making our, our forms for our side covers. Um, we're going to get back to this in a minute. We're actually going to start hammering out some sheet metal today. We got our paper forms going that we made from that. And you can see the result is a real nice form. We have the dimensionality to work off of the, the 3D model. So we're, we're well on our way with that. Hey, at the same time, I want to kind of switch gears and jump into the gas tank. So this is not an FXR gas tank, but I found this tank that has a cool shape. Unfortunately, some butthead dropped it on the floor and put a big dent in it, so I have to fix that now. But I like the way this tank sits. I don't like where this is, so the first thing we're going to do is, is knock this uh, filler neck out with a plasma cutter. While that's open, that'll give us the ability to heat up this area and, and take out that bend. Uh, through the good folks at Drag Specialties, we have a nice replacement bung. We're going to relocate this make out the cutout for that with the plasma cutter as well and then get that welded into shape a um, couple things that we have to do is hammer out these these tail pieces for the mount see if we can get them close to where they need to be and then ultimately i'm sort of hoping to, to cheat a little bit um you know typically on fxr this would be a a squared off tunnel I'm kind of hoping that I can just square it off for the look, which would be like a little valance panel here, and use it exactly the way it is. Worst comes to worst, I'll have to, again with the plasma cutter, knock out this tunnel, make a square tunnel and slide it in and then weld it back up. But we're going to see if we can get away with a little cheat first because it fits really nice the way, the way it is now. And I don't mind the shape of it. You know, and I think there's... I think there's plenty of room there once you get the the mounts in the right area so we'll see how that goes uh real quick let's jump to it and get into business here at the greasing gears garage okay so ultimately what we ended up doing here and this was under mark's advice was just clean up the side where the dent was and we started welding on the slide hammer posts you know this is like a, a spot welding gun that puts on posts that you can work with a slide hammer this is an old auto body trick that you know Mark and I have been doing for a long time. So get ready to do this a bunch of times because you have to work from the outside of the dent and go in cir in circles as you get to the deeper part. It'll it'll take a good while in several different applications. I think maybe four different times we came back to this to get the dent to uh, to reasonably smooth again. But in the end looks pretty good probably just take a light skim coat of mud now that we have it uh, smoothed out cleaned it up and um, once we got it to that point mark used a curved body hammer and dressed out some more of the dent and off we went um, i have a rough opening there and i'm just going to use a known circle make a nice clean line and i'm gonna round that thing out and then I'll have a pattern to make my sheet metal with. I have my template started with similar gauge sheet metal and I've roughed out the big cut so now it's going to be a little bit of a time to shape it. can tell that one of the problems is this is flat and this has a little bit of round to it so we're going to set up the planishing hammer and get that similar shape going before we make any more adjustments to its size because the size is pretty close see i had like a circular pattern working the outside it's got a a much better fit can't really tell as much from up here unless i flip it over and then you can see how much we've managed to achieve the dish so what i'm gonna do now is uh 
is get this down to a better size so that we can get it in there and hold it up against our piece. I started, like I still had a little bit of a, a radius to achieve with it. So I started back here and I got my tacks going. And then I took a, a body hammer and just kind of brought the line down. And then I went back and forth, back and forth, chasing the heat around. <laughs> So basically all I'm doing is cleaning off this uh, surface rust. I'm going to throw a quick coat of sandable primer over this so that it'll sit until the next time we come back to work without uh, getting all rusty. Okay, so that's about going to wrap it up for today with the FXR Evolution. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to the side covers again today because the tank ended up being so much more than I thought. We relocated the the um, filler neck ended up cutting all of the mounts completely off because none of those worked the way that I thought they were. Um, had a chance while we were uh, plasma cutting the old filler neck out, had a chance to go over to the shop with Mark and we used uh, you know the old weld on stud dent puller and, and got that dent out pretty good. Overall, you know, pretty happy with this. You, as you guys see from the, the uh, shot on the top of the tank, there's a little bit of a low spot there, but I'm not I'm not the kind of cat that finishes stuff completely in metal, so Mark will put a little skim coat on mud with that. Next step is we're gonna go to figure out how we're gonna get this how we're gonna get this mounted, what our mounts are gonna be. I threw some uh sandable primer over top of this thing so that the tank doesn't get rusty while we're doing that. That'll be for next episode. Thanks for coming along with us. Get out to Dennis Kirk's garagebuild.com today and check out the FXR Evolution. You can walk away with this bike when we're done. This is Chris with Cycle Source Magazine. We'll see you next time.